So imagine it is Ashura. Loads of people have left Imam Hussein, and there's a lot of commotion, people arguing, people packing, people convincing others to stay or go. You decide to stay. You are the 73rd companion of Imam Hussein. How and what would you do to aid the Imam of your time? How, where would you designate yourself to help the Imam, Imam Hussein on that day? It's difficult to answer because having hindsight now of the tragedies and the events that took place, the individual battles that were fought, the individual companion stories, their backgrounds, how they came to be there also, to then come and say, if I was there, I would have done this. Knowing the complex political situation at the time, the, the climate of how people felt, how scared they might have been knowing that they'll be going to their certain death. I might have been even worse than the ones who left, for example. If I was there, me myself today, I, I would hope not. I would hope that if I had the tawfiq to be able to contribute in any way to Imam Hussain on, on the day where he lost everything, everything, truly everything, I would wish to be amongst the wounded. We have a narration that says before any fighting actually took place, 4,000 archers to fire upon the tents of Imam Sayyidina Now in narrations we have there was obviously 72 companions but we have different narrations that say in total there was 130 people, 140 people, 150 people within the camp of Imam Hussein. Now imagine before any fighting commences, 4,000 arrows are fired upon, four, five, ten camps, each containing six, seven, eight people, 115 people in total. Now do the maths, how many arrows per person? We have even in narrations that not a single person was left fine. Every single person was wounded. This is before any actual battle commenced. <clears throat> so if I was there and if I had the Tawfi to be able to do anything, I would care for the wounded on a day where left, right and center Imam Hussein's losing the people closest to him, his children, his family members, his closest companions, everything, everything he's losing. I would want to try to take his mind off that as much as I can by tending to the wounded. That's what I would personally try and do if I had the tofu. So now, I want you to take your mind to present day. You've just uh, entered home. It's been a normal day, a normal week, usual routine. You come home and you see mom and dad are running around, preparing things, bringing in food. You're looking at what's all the commotion about, what's going on, do we have guests? Your mom turns around and tells you that yes, there's someone here to see you. He's sitting in the living room. He's expecting you. You're wondering who it is. 
you walk into the living room there is Imam Hussein sitting there what what would be going through your mind and what are the first words you'd say to him why me I would ask him why he's come to see me I would ask him if he accepts me as a servant to his servants not as his servant but a servant to his servants because his servants were Abul Fadl al-Abbas Ali al-Akbar Qasim We can't even say his servants to the servants of Hussein because the servant to the servant of Hussein was Joan so I would ask him if he accepts me as a servant to the servant to the servant of himself. I would ask him why he's come to visit me, why he's come to bless my life. Now after your conversation with the Imam, you've sat, you've uh, socialized, you've talked, many things you've talked about now he has to leave he gets up to leave what do you do i beg him to take my hand to take me with him to put my hand in the hand of his grandson, Imam al Mahdi. I'd beg him to employ me in his service. I'd beg him to grant me the ability to serve him, his family all of the Ahlul Bayt salam I beg him to always keep an eye on me to keep me on the straight path I'd beg him to be patient with me I'd beg him to forgive my shortcomings and it's funny saying these things that I would do this and I would say this but Probably if he's standing in front of me, I wouldn't be able to open my mouth. But he would know what's in my heart. He would know. Now, it's easy to say, in hindsight, on the day of Ashura, I would have done this. I would have served the Imam in this way. And it's easy to say if the Imam was at my house, I would ask him this and I would do this and that for him. But there is an Imam of our time. There is a hujjah upon us right now. What have you done for Imam Mahdi, Imam Sahib al-Zaman, alayhi salam? Nothing. Nothing. We can try and try our best. But we'll never be able to repay any of his kindness towards us. The Imam himself, Allah, hasten his reappearance and protect his heart from the pain we cause him has a very beautiful saying which is beautiful in the way that it highlights our true nature within ourselves 
The Imam says, my Shias act like we have employed them. They come for, for their, like for example, wages or their benefits. And as soon as we grant it to them, they go home, they forget about us until they have to come to us again. And this, to, to, to understand this saying of we only ever run to him or to the infallibles when we need something, when we want them to grant us something. And even when they grant it to us, we don't stay with them, we leave their side until again we need them for something else. It's truly shameful. Truly shameful. We have to try as much as we have for Imam al Hussein, who will forever be the dearest Imam to us. We have to try, in my opinion, even harder for Imam Mahdi. Because on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein had 72. He had 72 who were willing to give their lives, their children's lives, their servants' lives. They knew full well the tragedies that would befall upon them. They knew full well the enemy they were facing and how dirty the enemy would react with them. For example, with have a narration of uh, when Imam Hussain was finally lying on the ground. Those enemies formed circles around his holy body. The ones who were very close would throw stones at him. The ones who were a little bit further away would stab him with daggers those who were a little bit further back with swords, those who were furthest back with spears, those who were furthest back with arrows. Now imagine if only two people have you on the floor and they have no sharp weapons, they have no stones, they have no arrows, no knives, no spears, no daggers, nothing. They're just kicking you or punching you. Imagine the pain you have to go through. Now imagine an army that sees you lifeless, yet they hack at your body in this way. And these 72 knew these events would befell them, yet they stood strong. They stood to uphold the message of Hussein Now our Imam today, how many companions does he have? How many people can he count on? How many people can he come to for help? How many people even remember him during the day? Oh, uh -huh.